in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you.
God is good. Amen. Amen. I want to. I want to share. I want to share something with you. The Lord, this morning, brought it to my attention because as I was ministering, He brought it to me, and I don't want to let it go. You know, there are times the Lord will speak to you, and what you got to do is you got to write things down, or you got to just. Bring it out right away so you don't forget. All right? So this morning, the Lord, the Lord spoke to me about this one fact. And that is, the fact is this, that we need, amen, we need more than anything a move of God, listen to me, not only in our own lives, but in our world. We need a move of God. But li listen to me. The Bible says, judgment begins in the house of God. What is he saying? He's saying if it, if it begins in the house of God, then, listen, he said, if it begins in the house of God, then what will be the outcome of those that don't believe? Imagine, we're, we're seeing a world out there that is, is getting worse. It's not getting better, church. It's getting worse. I was, I was just being told, I think brother and sister were telling me earlier, that they arrested 15 guys from the south side area, and the gun shooting has kind of, kind of tapered down. You know, listen, this thing is, is heavy duty. People are gone, people have gone crazy with those guns. All over. Aurora is getting bad. How many know Aurora? I, I'm talking about where we live. This, this is getting bad all over the, the United States. But I'm talking to you about where we live because, because listen to me, we got to live here every day. And yet Jesus... Say it with me. Jesus, Jesus wants to change things. Jesus wants to make things better. How many want God to make things better? Amen. Praise the Lord. 
there's nothing, there's nothing better, listen to me, there's nothing better than when a family can go home and they, you know they're all saved and they're all okay. Nothing better. That, that's powerful. Amen? That's very powerful. But there's a lot of families tonight that their, their loved ones aren't in the Lord. And we need to be a part of that, bringing them to God. Traiéndolos al Señor. We got to bring them to the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? So I want to I wanna go with, I want you to go with me, but I wanted to read, I wanted to read a few things. I kind of tore this apart a little bit so that I wouldn't take all night with you. All right? I know you love the Word so much, you don't mind staying all night. But, but I wanted to read a few things to you. Amen. You know, I don't know if any of you ever heard of Leonard Ravenhill. Anybody here ever heard of him? He, he was considered to be a prophet. You know, there was some land in Texas that David Wilkerson owned. It was a ranch. And he had Leonard Ravenhill and his wife living there. Him and his wife living there. He had uh, the singer, what was his name, Dion, or what was his name that... that that sang that we had him here. He 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 had been his wife living there, and 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 uh, another one that was a, a singing artist also that died in a plane crash. Amen. He was living there. They were all all four couples were living in one place, and every day they would get up to pray. Every day they would get up to pray and seek the Lord and call on God, and. Uh, the Leonard Ravenhill believed that if you didn't spend the next four to eight hours in prayer before your day started, you weren't going to have a very good start. Huh? I can already see your minds. I can't stay four hours, eight hours praying. Well, well, you could spend an hour, you know. Uh, that, that that's too much. That's too much. No, it's not. Not when you see the. Not when you see what is what is happening. Look at this. The dividends. How many know what a dividend is? It's what you're going to get out of what you put in. How many understand that? It's what you're going to get out of what you put in. If you don't put nothing in, you get nothing out. How many have ever gone to the bank and you tried to get some money out and you didn't have any? Come on, you were just hoping that they'd make a mistake and give you some. Huh? But listen to me. You, you can only get what you put in. If you don't put anything into it, you get nothing out of it. This is what the Lord has been trying to get to the church. He's been trying to get the church to understand how important it was for him to get you saved so that you could move with God, so that you could help reach the world for Jesus Christ. Anybody here? I told you this morning, when he comes into your life, he doesn't bring a part of himself. He brings everything he is into your life. So that includes his love. More than anything, he brings his love into your life, into your heart. El amor de Dios viene a penetrar tu vida. The love of Jesus Christ comes to penetrate your life, your heart. Come on, are you with me, church? Look, look over here. If you sit around in church, oh, I don't like that person. Oh, that person throws me in a bummer, man. You know, and, and 
I get a drag with her, you know. And you know how you guys talk? I talk right. But I've heard some of you, man. I heard the kids. I hear the kids sometimes. I call them more and I say, what did you just say? What does that mean? I tell them. I want to know what everything means so that when I hear the kids. Are, are you with me, church? When he comes into your life, listen, he brings everything he is into your heart and he pours, the Bible says, he pours his love into your heart. Listen, go with me. Go with me real quickly to Romans chapter 5, I think it is. I'm not sure, but let's go there. Hallelujah. And I think it's verse 5 and 6 or something like that. Five and six. Well, go to four. No, okay. Five and six. We're going to go there. Such hope never disappoints. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. Look at this. For God's love, el amor de Dios, God's love has been poured out in our hearts. It doesn't say his hatred has been poured out in you. His, his lukewarmness has been poured out in you. No. He's talking about you and me. And he's saying... God's love has been poured out in our hearts. God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. This is the Word of God. Does your Bible say that? Look at your Bible. Or look at your... Don't, don't be looking at Facebook. Look at the Bible. And look what it says. Through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So, so when you look at it, when you look at it in, in, in the reality of what he's talking about, look, look over here. You, you, get a, you get a glass of water. Somebody gives you a glass of water and you take a little drink. No. He's talking about something being poured out. Has anybody ever drained you with water? I mean, just shh. Huh? Poured out. And it's not, listen to me, he doesn't stop. He did come into your heart and just poured it out once and then, okay, that's it. No, listen, the, the love of God has been poured out. It's poured out. Say, it's poured out in my heart. Is poured out. All right? Now look at this. But he gives you and I the responsibility to keep it alive. No, no you, you got to hear me tonight. Love can die. El amor se puede morir. So it's up to you and I to, to keep it going. How do you keep the love of Jesus going in your heart? How do you keep it moving? How do you keep it going? You got to keep that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And in your life, the, your relationship, all, every day, it's an everyday thing. It's not a one-time thing. Listen to me. It's an everyday thing thing and you and him have got to have that communication line open come on so that he can pour it into you all the time yeah. it keeps going and what for listen because he knows that in the natural in the natural you don't like a lot of people huh 
I've tried to, brother. In the natural, we don't like a lot of people. A lot of people throw it a bummer. Oh, you know. But when Jesus pours his love into your heart, you begin to love everyone. Even those you couldn't love before. What a trip, huh? Praise God. By the love of God. And so what does he do? Every day, that's a relationship. Every day, relationship. Every day, relationship. It, you know why people break up? You know why people, marriages break up? Out of misunderstandings. Not out of, oh, I hate him. Look at, no, that, all of that comes up later out of misunderstandings because somewhere along the line, you have put a stomp, a stumper on the love of God. Ah, oh, I, I love him, but, I, but I'm not in love. I said, what the heck? How many here are in love with Jesus? Then, then, Then if you love the Lord, His Word has got to be number one for you. His word, okay, so look over here for a moment. And if his word is number one for you, then you're going to live with the Lord through that word. Oh, I don't like this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look for a promise that blesses me. Come on, you know you you know that's all of you. Come on, every morning we get up and we look for something great instead of something we need. Oh Jesus, help me, Lord. This this is heavy duty. Amen. But if you'll do what God says, He'll bless you. Look at this. Look over here. Look over here. There's a lot of people running around across the country, everywhere. They're going everywhere. Oh, I'm going to go hear this speaker. I'm going to go hear that one. I'm going to hear that one. They never get a chance to go hear their own pastor. Okay, so look at this. Look at this. Look at this. They're everywhere running and looking for the key to blessing. I want to give you the key so that you don't have to run all over the country. Draw close to Jesus. He'll bless you without you even asking. Oh, no, I, I just... No, 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 no. Listen to me. Run after Jesus. He's the lover of your soul. He's the one that died for you on Calvary. He's the ultimate of all, of everything in Christianity. He is... Love. You want to see love in action? Look at the cross. Look at this. Somebody said, somebody told me one day, you know, that the, the cross was the Roman way of executing criminals, murderers, thieves, and every, every other sin you can think of that would use the cross. The cross was not a, a, a new thing. The cross had been used for Many, many, probably even a century or so before Jesus came. But Jesus turned that cross around from a criminal's execution. He turned it into a, a symbol of victory. Oh, you're not hearing me. A symbol of love. A symbol of, come on. When you go into Christians' houses, the first thing you see on the walls and everything are crosses and 
You know, you, you, you see them in their cars, you'll find a cross hanging from the mirror, you know, or, or something. There's always a cross involved because the cross no longer represents, are you with me, church? It no longer represents being destroyed, you know. It represents, look, listen to me, it represents victory. It represents the love of God setting you and me free. What a, what a powerful God. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. So, 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 uh, look at this. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us, for God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Ew, I can't stand him. No, 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 no. You, you better watch what you're saying. Watch them ugly words. You got to tell yourself, oh, you know what? I may not like the way they are, but I love them. I've heard parents tell their kids, right now, I'm so angry with you, I don't even want to claim you as my son or daughter, and I don't even know if I love you. And I'm, I look at them and say, what? I've heard it said. Not this church. This church is somewhere else. And I've looked at it and I said, wow, what a trip. Then we, we mistake what love is too because some of our kids get in trouble and instead of, instead of putting a stop to it, instead of putting some kind of grounds on this thing to get them back in line, we're out there buying them games and, and, and videos and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff and they just finished breaking the law. So you know what the kid thinks? I'm going to go break the law again, see what else they buy me. Okay, you'll get it. You'll get it around the corner. You'll get it. Praise the Lord. But, but, but imagine, remember love, love, el amor de Dios. You, you can't say you love God and don't love what he's doing. You can't say you love God and don't love his work. It's impossible. Well, I love the Lord, but I, I don't know about what, what these people are doing. Oh, no, no, no. You can't love God and hate his work. It, it, it just doesn't work like that. You can't love God and hate his servants. And I tell everybody, not everybody in the church loves me. Maybe 99%. I. Now, there's, there's always some. There's always some that I want to fight. I want to criticize this. I want to find out what he's doing wrong. I had a guy that would take notes. Here, he would take notes to try to catch me in, in what I was preaching was wrong, theologically. Again, I never went to Bible school or nothing, but I do know what theologically means and everything else. All right? So I would tell him, hey, do you want to borrow my dictionary? <laughs> He'd get mad at me. What a trip. Isn't that a trip? Praise God. So I want us to, we're going to go to, to this tonight because this is so important if you're born again. Hallelujah. Go with me to Isaiah 58. I want to read a few things to you. One from A.W. Tozer, or no, from Leonard Ravenhill. And then I want to read one from Nikki Cruz. Okay, they're more down our, our level right here. 
All right? Look what he says. Let it rev it, Hill. We need, we need a trumpet voice. We need a trumpet voice. What does he mean by a trumpet voice? Huh? What does he mean by a trumpet voice? Imagine each one of us has been called to sound the trumpet. Every Christian has been, has been called to sound the trumpet. What, what, what is it? What is it? Look at this. You, you see the days we're living in. You see what's going on in our, in our country alone. What is happening? All right? In our country alone. So, so when you see all that and you know all that, imagine this. The Lord is looking for people that are born again to sound the trumpet. We sound it out of love. Sonaba la trompeta por amor. When you really have the love of Jesus living in you, you desire no one to miss heaven. You cannot, hey, listen, if you desire people to go to hell, you got to ask yourself if you're even saved. Because no one should, ha should ever have to go to hell. Jesus put it like this. He said, hell was not created for human beings. It was created for Satan and his angels. Now, people go there because they themselves don't want nothing to do with God. Are you with me, church? But there are so many still, so many that, that want to find a way out of the lifestyle they're in, and they don't know how. And, and the Holy Spirit has to go and deal with them. But, but look at this. Look at this. You've got to hear me tonight. He can only deal with people to what they have or understand. According to the word. Are you with me? Like, like we were talking yesterday. Your, your dad, you guys have witnessed to him. You guys have talked to him. Okay, you've left something in his heart for the Holy Spirit to deal with. But how many individuals never have the chance because no one has sounded the trumpet on them? For years, the church has been silent. I mean, for years, the church has been silent. The enemy has managed to silence the church. To make them think that all we're supposed to do is have a vacation as Christians. But, but he's never told you that your real calling is to sound the trumpet. Sound the trumpet with love. Say it with me. Sound the trumpet with love. Are, are you here, church? I did prison ministries and jail ministries for many years. And, and listen, why did I go there? Why did I go in there for? Why did I? The police department one day in Brighton pulled me out to find out who I was. I'd been going there already for about a year, sister, and they wanted to find out who I was. So they, 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 they ran a make on me, and they pulled out all my felonies. A big roll like that. You know how they used to do index cards? <laughs> the other day I went to see if they'd let me get a license to, to, to conceal carry. And they added more felonies. <laughs> they added more. I said, wow, this is heavy duty, man. Isn't it a trip? But I don't need all that. I, I, I got what I need. I need Jesus. Okay. Yeah, give him praise. Yes. 
But they, they pulled me out one night and they asked me a question. They said, why do you come here? Because after one year of going there, all the inmates were, were running around, walking around with Bibles in their hands. They were having prayer meetings in the back in their cells. They were fasting. They were, are you with me, church? And the police thought, these guys are plotting something. I told him, brother, the only thing we're plotting is to go to heaven when the trumpet sounds. Then you were going to have a breakout. <laughs> See? But I went for years. I went for about 20 years. And then the Lord started putting, changing my ministry, and I started getting more people and so forth. So now we, we sent people in. We sent others in, to, in there to minister and all that. Okay? But what I'm saying is this. What I, what I want you to see is this. But why do we go in there? Because I just don't, I don't want them to smoke or cuss or what? Well, why do we go in there? Why do we, why do we go to the streets? We, we have brother, 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 uh, what's his name? Huh? Who? Boy, you, you guys know, but how come you don't show up? <laughs> brother Eric Brother Eric goes to the street He takes a team of guys with him And they go out there man To, to federal to the, All over wherever the, the Lord sends them They go down there and they start talking to everybody About the Lord and giving them tracts And all that Why? Why? We could just say forget it We're not going over there let, 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 Whatever happens happens But that's not God And that's not the love of Jesus are you with me, church? Okay, so they go and, and they, they go out there and they and they they, they, they they get a hold of these guys and, and 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 so forth. Man, they bring guys sometimes here, man, that I'm looking at it, man, and I'm saying, brother, when I see him, I don't tell them that, but I'm telling myself, brother, God has to really do a miracle on this guy. This guy's messed up from the outside, inside, the bottom side, the top side, every side. So I tell him, put him in the home. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> See, but, but I forget, and you forget, that we're looking at people today from our point of view now. But we, we forget how we looked. We, we forget, man, we were tore up from the floor up. And somebody loved you enough to pray for you and tell you about Jesus. These two guys right here, this guy and his brother. Oh, my God. No, I'm telling you, when I was on Pierce Street, they, they were terrible. I mean, terrible. And I thought... What am I going to do with them? I, and I said, I know what I'm going to do. I sent them to Artesia to the home. Right? And I called I call Brother Alex. Hey, bro, just call him and find out how, 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 how these two guys are doing. Oh, they're doing good. He said, I got them on the toothbrush. I got them on discipline right now. I got them. Dish, hey, he got the belt. He's right there sitting. He got the belt, the leather belt. Bend over, brother. Pow! Uh, some of you would look at that and say, oh, no, that's terrible. No, but look at it. But he's right there. So we're going to get belts over here that will give up to the pastors. <laughs> you guys were clapping. Now all of a sudden they stopped immediately. Uh, Lord help me, Jesus. 
So, so he says this. This is what he says. This is Leonard Ravenhill. We need a trumpet voice again to tell sluggish believers. You know what a sluggish believer is? Have you ever had to tell your husband, honey, you got to move. Come on, we got things to do. And he, oh, I'm, I'm too tired. I don't want to do it. Huh? That's sluggish. The church of Jesus Christ for the past 20 years has become sluggish. Sluggish. They, they won't move. If you have a barbecue, they'll all go. But if you call a prayer meeting, none of them will show up. Oh, you don't want to hear me. Come on, you, 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 you can call an outing, you can call all kinds of stuff. Man, we're ready for all that. But listen, for spiritual things, listen to me, spiritual things, we got to wake up. Our families need Jesus. Our loved ones need the Lord. Man, brother, if there was ever a time, you and I need to wake up on this. And, and, and Brother Leonard Ravenhill was, was speaking about it. He was talking about it. He wanted you and I to hear it. He no longer here. He passed away. But look at this. I hear Leonard Ravenhill saying, we need a trumpet voice again to tell sluggish believers that God requires holiness of his people. There is a famine of true holiness preaching. And there is. There is. I've seen people, when I start talking about sin and all that, I see people get up and leave. They've gotten up and walked away because they no longer believe anything they're doing is wrong. Let me say this to you. For a long time, I had to hear Christians tell others, Oh, brother, God loves you. He, ta he accepts you just the way you are. That's a half-truth. Yeah. Say half-truth. Half See, what you're not really telling them is, Brother, once you come to God, He's going to change you. Amen. He's going to transform you. Praise the Lord. Praise. Give him praise. So, so imagine, uh, I want to read to you what Nikki, Nikki Cruz wrote here. I want, to, I, want you to, I want you to see it with me. All right? He says, Nikki Cruz is saying, we stink more, we stink. You know what stink means? We stink more of the world than we stink of sackcloth and ashes. We're more involved in the world. We're more involved in natural things than we are spiritual things. Anybody with me? We, we, we need to understand that. We need to see that. That we, 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 we stink more, he says, he says it like this, we stink more of the world than we stink of sackcloth and ashes. Imagine that man got saved when he was 18 years old, I think. And he's 82 or 83 right now. And he's still going. And he's still on fire. Yeah. But see, you're clapping for him. But what about you? If he can do it, you can do it. A 
a lot of contemporary churches today would feel more at home in a movie house rather than in the house of prayer. That's heavy. Oh, some of you are looking at me kind of strange. Guilty or what? <laughs> Look at this. More afraid of holy living than of sinning. We're more afraid to live right than we are of doing wrong. That's the church. He's talking about the church. I'm talking to you. Nikki Cruz is saying this. Imagine, that's the church. I've seen that for years. We know more about money than magnifying Christ in our bodies. It is so compromised that holiness and living a sin-free life is hearsay to the modern church. And it's true. It's true. We want to live any way we want to, but listen to me. But at what, who's at stake here? What, what's at stake? Your family. Your loved ones. Anybody here with me? That's at stake. I'm not talking T-bone. They'll be lost. I remember one day my son and my grandson took me to eat one day. I'm not supposed to mention him or say anything. I love my son. But they were trying to get me to change from what I really believe in this and, and how, I, how I want people to, to do the right and, and to still. And, and I said, brother, I could never believe like you. Never. I could never believe like that. And I won't. I says, I told him, I said, I had an experience with God. Am I going to put God aside to do this? No way. The modern church is quite simply just the world with a Christian t-shirt on. Hijo su mañana. That's why I stopped making jackets. I used to have jackets made with our logo and everything. And then I'd get phone calls from bartenders. Hey, I just saw a guy in here with your jacket on, man. Or they'd be at the, at the pawn shop trying to pawn their jacket. Brother, this is heavy duty, isn't it? Say it with me, it's heavy duty. And he writes, I believe the Spirit is saying, back to the cross. Well, this church has been doing that. We've been getting back to the cross. Come on, we've been getting back to where we belonged. Yes, give him praise. This is Nicky Cruz talking here. He says, I believe the Spirit is saying back to the cross and back to the basics. What, what did he say? What did, what, did, what did the Lord say today in Revelation chapter 2? Come back to your first love. Come back to where I found you. Come back to what you were doing back then. Amen. I mean, we, we want to grow, we want to fly, we want to do all kinds of things, but you're, you're letting crazy stuff 
come, come into your heart. Take your life away from the Lord. And by the time you know it, you don't know what's up or down. I tell them, I tell, I tell them, I tell them all the time, if you know Jesus, if you know the Holy Spirit, you're not going to follow all kinds of crazy stuff. He's going he's to prompt you. He's going to speak to you. Back to basics. Back to repentance. Back to truth telling. However unpopular that might be. Look at what he says. However unpopular that might be. Back to the real Jesus and the real gospel is the Spirit speaking this to you as well. He says, is the Spirit speaking this to you too? We got to get back. How many believe we got to get back? I got to become a trumpet that the Lord can use. My mouth has got to become, out of love, my, trump, my mouth has got to become that trumpet that others can hear and understand. Are you with me, church? So Isaiah 58, 1, we're going to go there. Let's find out what he says there. Cry aloud and spare not. What does that mean? Huh? That means don't hold back. Who said that? I won't give you a, a star. Yeah, don't hold back. Don't don't let up. Let let them know. Listen, listen to me, church. We don't know how much time we have left. I'm telling you the truth. We don't know how much time we have left. Your your family doesn't know the Lord. Don't be afraid to tell them. But they get mad at me. They get angry with me. They 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 tell me to keep quiet. They don't want to hear it and all that. Well, that's even better. Tell them again. They're going to get so tired of hearing you that they're going to say, okay, I'm going to go with you. And that morning, the Lord's going to meet them. Amen. Yes. Cry out loud. How many of you, if you smash your finger, you go, oh, ouch. <laughs> no. Ouch! What happened, Mom? I hit my finger! And you're over here making a big old scene, and they're over, oh, let me put some ice. Let me put this, let me put that. You know, and your nails hanging halfway off. <laughs> All right? Are, are you with me? But why not about the Lord? This is even more real, church. This is more real than banging your hand with a hammer or something. When, when people, listen to me, I, I hate to say it to you, but, but when people go to hell, they will never come back out. Nunca van a salir del infierno. They will never be able to be paroled out of there, probationed out of there. They'll never be able to just walk out of there. Okay, I've done my time. I'm going, no, 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 no. Once you end up in hell, it's for all eternity. That's why Jesus tells you and I today. He tells us, I want you to cry out loud. Tell them. Why? Because I got to have something to work through. I got to have something to work with. Come on. Is there anybody here with me, church? You know, there are some people, I know, I, know, I know people a lot, I know a lot of people. I know some guys out there, they haven't come yet, but they're going to come. You know what they've been doing? They've been looking for faults. I tell them, you know what, one of these days, you're going to have so many faults, you're going to forget you even have a single one, and you're going to get to church. Amen. You're taking all the faults home with you, I tell them. You're not leaving any in church.
Now look at this. Let me ask you a question. The Lord gives you a Bible. What for? What is that all? What is it, sir? Huh? To obey it. Cry out loud. Spare not. Don't hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you. Till the next time, amen.